Hello, welcome to the Bakwas channel for self-paced tutorials on Internet of Things. This video demonstrates the installation and testing of the Arduino Ethernet Shield Revision 2 on an Arduino microcomputer in a local area network infrastructure. The objectives of this demonstration are to illustrate the basic use of the Arduino Ethernet library and to use a very simple web client to validate the deployment of the hardware and software for the Ethernet Shield. The Arduino Ethernet Shield Revision 2 has the following key features. The controller uses the WizNet W5500 chip with the 32 kilobyte buffer. The upper limit of the speed is 100 megabits per second, even in 2021. The connection uses the serial peripheral interface for the connection between the shield and the host microcomputer. The reset button on the shield will also reset the microcomputer and the shield obtains its power needs from the host microcomputer. There are four LEDs on board the shield. The power on and pin 13 LEDs are adjacent to the Ethernet RJ45 jack. The on LED signals that the shield and board are connected upon power up. The 13 LED is the standard Arduino board LED which being hidden from view with the hat can now be viewed on the shield. The link and ACT leads are on the Ethernet RJ45 jack. The ACT lead flashes when there is transmit or receive activity at the Ethernet jack. The link LED confirms the presence of a network layer 1 connectivity. It flashes when the shield receives or transmits data. The serial peripheral interface uses the following pins for communication with the host computer. Pin 10 for chip select for the Arduino Uno. Pin 11 for MOSI, which is master out, slave in. Pin 12 for MISO, which is master in, slave out, and pin 13 for the serial clock. The chip select pin for the SD card functions is digital pin 4. It is strongly recommended that standard Arduino libraries be used for state management when using the SD card. Quite a few Arduino shields or hats have support for on-shield SD cards. The Arduino Ethernet Shield Rev 2 is no exception. Further discussion on using the SD card option on this shield is best left for a future video tutorial. The shield is DHCP client capable. Its MAC address is printed on the sticker on the bottom side of the shield. The first three bytes of the MAC address identify the manufacturer's ID. In this case, it is Arduino. This video demonstration of a very simple web client illustrates the classic HTTP GET request response data exchanges. A query is sent to the search engine at DuckDuckGo. The query string is Arduino EtherShield. The response from the search engine is displayed in the serial monitor window as a stream of bytes. Obviously, even for this simple exercise, there is significant room for improvement. 
but the focus for this tutorial is to ensure hardware and software for the Ethernet shield are operating properly. The cosmetic bells and whistles and eye candy for presentation purposes can come later. The four important classes in the Arduino Ethernet library are Client, Ethernet, IP address and server. The server class is not used in this very simple demonstration and therefore omitted from further consideration. The methods of this class used in the demonstration are init, begin, hardware status, link status and local IP. The init method permits the designation of the chip select digital pin for the network controller chip on the Ethernet shield hat. The default chip select pin number for the Arduino Uno board is 10. The begin method initializes the settings. There are several overloaded methods available to use. MAC address only, MAC address and IP address, MAC address, IP address and DNS server name and address, MAC address, IP address, DNS server and gateway address. And finally, MAC address, IP address, DNS server, gateway and subnet. Only the first method returns a value of 0 or 1 to indicate DHCP connection status. The hardware status method identifies the network controller chip. The method does not require any input parameter. The mnemonic for the return value from the call is declared in the library header file. The link status method is usable only for W5200 and W5500 controller chips to determine whether the cable is connected or disconnected. In other words, unplugged or defective. Naturally, this method is very useful in what is known as defensive programming. The local IP method is very useful to obtain the IP address accepted by the DHCP client. The methods of the client class used in this demonstration are connect, connected, print LN, available, read, and stop. There are many other methods in this class that are beyond the scope of this tutorial. Instantiation of the network client object is performed with the Ethernet client constructor. The Ethernet client can connect to an address or name using one of three different methods. Each method returns a response code that is enumerated in the slide. When a name is used, it is resolved to an IP address using DNS query services. To ascertain the current status of a network client connection, use the connected method which returns a true or false response to the connection status. Even if the connection has been explicitly closed, but there is unread data in the buffer, then the status will remain true. The println method is similar to the very familiar one in the serial class. This method is useful in displaying data to the serial monitor window. The difference between print and println is that the latter appends two bytes for carriage return and new line ASCII codes at the end of the output. The available method checks if data is available for the connection. It does not read the data into any buffer. 
The read method, as the name implies, reads the next byte of data in the connection pipeline. If there is no data present, then the response value is minus 1. The stop method disconnects the client. There are no input parameters and no response is returned. The IP address method instantiates an IP address for use in the Arduino sketch. Here are some examples of the use of the IP address class. Note that support is limited to IPv4 addresses only. All Arduino sketches have two key sections, setup and loop. In this demonstration, the setup section initialized the hardware using the Arduino Ethernet library and then sent an HTTP GET request to an internet search engine. The loop section processed the response from the search engine and echoed each byte of the response data to the serial monitor window. When there was no further data to be read from the response stream, the connection was closed. This tutorial was a very simple introduction to hardware and software for the Arduino Ethernet Shield Revision 2. The demonstration was limited to illustrating that key hardware and software components were installed as required. This video presentation was assembled with free open source software. Go FOSS! That's all folks. Thanks for taking the time to view this presentation. Would love to hear from you with your feedback. You are always welcome to be critical in any which way you can. Until next time, bye for now.